This week we covered plasticity and epigenetics. And what I found most interesting from the pre-class video um, was the relationship between genes and plasticity and the environment. Uh, specifically based on our genes, we will react to our environment in distinct ways. And I look forward to exploring that more in detail in week 15 where we cover cultural uh, neuroscience. Um, the most interesting three things that I uh, learned were the different types of neuroplasticity, uh, for example, recuperation and restructuring, um, you know, regaining a lost skill due to a TBI versus a stroke, and then with restructuring, breaking old connections and reestablishing new ones through therapeutic in interventions. Uh, secondly, developmental plasticity, which occurs over our lifetime. So for example, during uh, gestation, uh, zero to three months, uh, neural migration should occur. Um, if there are any genetic predispositions in that infant, such as dyslexia, uh, those will become evident within the first five months um, in the BRCA and Wernicke areas, which are the language parts of the brain. And then lastly, all learning is a result of plasticity, good and bad. Um, we have physiological evidence for this in the brain. Uh, the most confusing idea from the pre-class and what I wanted more clarification on was ectopic cells and how they block the neural, uh, normal neural connections in key areas of the brain, which is what happens with people that have learning problems such as dyslexia. Um, I was unclear whether or not there are specific primary or secondary preventative methods that can either um, delay or bypass um, the, the activation of these normal, uh, um, abnormal neural connections with regard to ectopic cells. Um, and then the two uh, new understandings that I gained from the bundle uh, were recent studies regarding mapping of the connectome um, indicate that connections in the mammalian brain <clears throat> may undergo rewiring during learning and experience dependent plasticity. So it suggests that the connectome is more dynamic than we previously thought, um, according to Bennett, 2018 at all. Uh, secondly, Early experiences impact um, children's future outcomes through biological embedding, um, the process whereby experiences produce lasting changes in a, in a biological function and system. Um, for example, early uh, life social experiences, trauma, caregiver, caregiving, you know, maternal mental health, um, all are known to contribute to individual differences in susceptibility and resilience uh, in a range of physical and mental uh, health outcomes uh, in children through adulthood. So that's all I got. Have a good week, guys. I'll see you soon.